Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 10 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Super Mario Brothers. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to be talking about sprite maps. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is turning the textures that you see over on this side of the screen into the one single large texture that you see above using an application called Texture Packer. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and stick with me. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and download the LibGDX Texture Packer. Go to Google, LibGDX Texture Packer. It'll be the very first thing that pops up. You'll go to Downloads and just download the newest version. When you open up uh, the texture packer, you're gonna see a screen similar to this. What we're gonna do is create a new pack and we'll call it Mario and Enemies. Click OK. Now you're gonna select an input directory. This is the directory that you store all your original uh, uh, images in. So uh, I have already, let's go to Brentarelli. Google Drive, my dev folder, and Mario graphics. So I have four images here. Uh, the big Mario, the little Mario, the Goomba images, and the turtle images. We're gonna select a choose here. Well, we'll go back to dev. So we'll click this one and select choose. Now the output directory, we're going to go to where we want it. Uh, I'm going to export it directly into our assets folder. So Mario Bros, Android, assets gosh I gotta go up one and just select assets here click choose now what you're gonna do is you're gonna select pack them all click close when it'll be done um, and then now we can go to um, our folder here make sure everything looks right Google Drive dev Mario Bros Android assets and we should see Mario and enemies dot PNG and now you can see that we have a uh, image with all of our textures packed together we also have a Mario and enemies dot pack and we're gonna go over that next so if you go ahead and open up uh, the Mario and enemies dot pack file in any text editor you'll see that it's basically just a plain text file in fact you can rename the file Mario and enemies dot txt and everything will work the same so basically what it does is it takes all the named uh, individual files that you had before you packed everything together and it puts it into one big file and then uses this uh, file to locate those individual textures uh, in libgdx. So you can see that we have the big Mario, the little Mario, Turtle, and Goomba, and it gives the X and Y coordinate systems as well as uh, the width and height of those textures uh, so that libgdx can find them in the future. So to use this in libgdx, what we wanna do is go to our play screen. We're gonna create a private texture atlas and called it atlas and then down inside of our constructor we're going to say I guess we can just do it here atlas equals new texture atlas and then we give it the string uh, that our pack file is so Mario and enemies oops enemies dot pack there we go. So before moving on, a little disclaimer, because I know I'm going to be asked, why didn't you use libgdx's asset manager? And the simple answer is because we really don't need to. We're not loading that many graphics. It's not very intensive on our processor to load this many graphics. It's only, you know, like a few kilobits, so we don't actually need to. But if you're loading a whole lot of resources into your game, you may want to look at libgdx's asset manager. And we may go over that in a future tutorial, but probably not in this series. So we're going to create a, uh, a new method here, rather, uh, that returns our atlas. So public um, texture atlas uh, and get atlas. And we'll just return our atlas. And then what we're going to do is pass in the play screen uh, to Mario. So um, we'll just say this. And so what we can do is go back to Mario here and we'll say play screen screen. And there we go. 
So now what we're going to do is make a call to super, which is actually in the sprite class, and it can take in a texture region that we can manipulate uh, in uh, the code below. So um, what we're going to do is say super. Now we need to give it the texture um, region that we're going to be using. So this is screen dot get atlas dot find region now we need to get the region by name so it's just a string and what we're gonna say is little little Mario so we're gonna get all the uh, the sprite map for all the actions that the little Mario can do next let's go ahead and get the individual texture that would represent Mario just standing still in our world not moving at all so let's create a new private texture region and call it Mario stand and then down here, what we're going to do is say Mario stand equals new texture region. And this takes in a few parameters. The first is the texture that we're going to get this texture region from. So we'll say get texture from our sprite, which we already got above with a find region uh, little Mario. Now it's going to ask for an X and Y coordinate of where it's going to start to grab the image from this texture. If we look it are Mario and M enemies. This is the this is the little Mario uh, texture or region, okay, or texture in itself. We want to, the Mario standing image is right the very first one. So it starts from the upper left hand corner and works down uh, to the bottom right hand corner. So the starting coordinate is zero zero, and it's sixteen by sixteen. So it's going to end in this bottom right hand corner. So to represent that, what we say is the X and Y coordinate of this uh, sprite that we want is 0, 0. It is width is 16 and its height is 16. Now we need to set the bounds of our sprite uh, so it knows uh, how large to render our sprite on the screen. So we want to set bounds give it the x and y coordinate we'll just say 0 and 0 is the x and y coordinate the um, width will be 16 um, divided by Mario Bros ppm the pixels per meter okay because everything needs to be scaled and then the height will be 16 uh, divided by Mario Bros ppm now we can say uh, set region to Mario stand so this is the actual texture region that is now associated with this sprite now to render Mario to our screen our play screen we need to do a few things inside the render method in our play screen I've already written this code out to, just to save some time so what we're gonna do is say the game dot batch dot set projection matrix to our game cam this is the main cam when we're running around through our game we want to set only what that game can see so that's what that is then we have to begin our batch remember we have to open the box to put all the textures we want inside of it and we have to end that when we're done putting things inside what we are doing in between that is saying player dot draw in giving the sprite the game batch to draw itself on you don't see the draw method uh, on Mario right now because we're not overriding it it's actually inside the sprite class itself it knows how to draw itself as long as it has a region to draw so running the game right now you can see Mario is drawn in the bottom left hand corner at zero zero he is not attached to our uh, body our box 2d body so let's go ahead and fix that so let's go ahead and create a new method called public void update that takes in a float delta time and inside this we're going to say set position and we're gonna set it to the position of our box 2d body now if you remember right our box 2d body is in the center of our fixture and we want the coordinate system of the bottom left hand corner of our fixture even though it's a circle just think the bottom left hand corner okay so to do that we need to get uh, GD uh, let's see b2 body dot get position dot x now this gives us the center point of our fixture minus get width of our sprite divided by two okay so move it over half the width of the sprite that's for the x-axis 
And then we need b2 body dot get position dot y minus get the height of the sprite divided by two. Now the last thing we need to do is go inside of our update method and I've already commented it out here but inside the update method in our play screen we need to say player dot update and give it the delta time. So running the game now you can see that we have our sprite attached to our box 2d body and we still got collision and such like that, but it looks like he's sinking into the ground just a little bit. Let's change that. Let's go ahead and change the radius to six inside define Mario. That'll make uh, the box 2D body uh, slightly larger. It may uh, need a little bit more adjusting after that with the set position, but we're just gonna go, okay, that doesn't look too bad. We can dig that for right now. So, um, that is pretty much it. We have uh, the Mario sprite following our box 2D body. Uh, it's not animated yet, but we will fix that in upcoming tutorials. So I hope you stick with me. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We learned uh, about texture packers and sprite maps, how to add them to our sprite using Texture Atlas. Um, so if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it, but more importantly, please share it if you do like it. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching and I'll catch you guys next time.